Welcome to the Ultimate Life Television Program, brought to you by Pastor Gracia Selassie Awie of Treasure House ICGC, where you are treasured and not trashed. Welcome to the Ultimate Life Broadcast. I'm your host, Gracia Selassie Awie, Pastor of Treasure House ICGC. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's life above the ordinary. It's called the ultimate life. On this program, you are presented with a blueprint for the ultimate life. So expect to be changed, expect to grow, expect the ultimate life. I'm teaching today on who are you imitating? What I'm about to share with you today is very important. It's a pivotal uh, message in the life of the church. It might not be one of those messages that are that excites you and you shout about, but I think it will help you if you grasp the concept of what I'm about to share with you, because it's the key to changing your life. How many of you want to change and grow? I'm sure you want to change and grow. That's why you tune into this broadcast. You may have realized in our culture that we are very prone to imitating those that we admire. You can tell who people admire because they imitate and copy them. There are 85,000 Elvis Presley impersonators worldwide. They admire a dead person so much that they want to copy the way he looks. That's the nature of who we are. When we admire or revere someone, we tend to want to imitate them. Donna uh, Marie Trego from Cardiff is a Lady Gaga impersonator. She has spent £70,000 on buying costumes to be a Lady Gaga impersonator. She's a housewife by day and Gaga by night. And she's put on shows all across the world. She's even won two gay Oscars known as uh, Goscas. When they interviewed her, she said this, I'm constantly watching her and, and she evolves so I can get it right. It's, it's an amazing thing. She's taken over my life. My house is full of costumes. There's a bit of gaga in every room. It cost me an arm and a leg to keep up with her. She's going gaga over gaga. And because of that, she imitates her. And it's taking on uh, her person. There is a powerful truth in that. There's another lady. Her name is uh, Nelina Namita. She's a mother of three children, 49 years old. She spent the last 20 years having 51 uh, surgeries, costing her 200,000 pounds so that she can look like Queen uh, Nefertiti, who was one of the wives of the great pharaohs. She's so taken with this person that she's altered her body to become like her. What we admire, we will imitate. And then there is uh, Mickey J, who is a professional Michael Jackson impersonator. She, uh, she in 1991 saw his act and, and since then she has spent 8,000, 8,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds on plastic surgery to get her nose, chin and cheek remolded. She says, most people know I'm a woman, but that doesn't bother me. And she has spent her life obsessed with the king of pop. He's also dead, but she wants to be like him. A man called uh, Gavin Paslow, 43-year-old former security guard, has spent £10,000 on operations to give himself fangs, a frog tongue, and horns on his head to look like Lucifer. He's even changed his name to Diablo uh the the lenfa when they interviewed him he said i don't want to be a satanist i'm not a satanist but i clearly or, or but let me put this way but clearly he's he's enamored by who satan is 
so much so that in his desire to emulate this man he has spent huge amounts of money to make his body look like the devil and then finally a venezuelan a venezuelan man venezuelan man called henry damon who had implants put on his face and part of his nose chopped off to fulfill his dream of looking like a captain america's enemy red skull the married father now calls himself red skull he has also tattooed his eyeballs black before adding red and black face tattoos to look like the comic book villain who are you imitating today who do you want to look like because those that we revere we begin to resemble so who do you revere today who is it at the center of your life what is it that you are revering in your life because you are going to begin to resemble it we become what we worship and you've got to be careful what you worship in your life what you admire because you begin to resemble that either to your ruin if you admire something that is bad or to your restoration if you worship god when you worship him you start to get your life restored when you worship the wrong things you ruin your life because you take on uh, that persona in your life book of ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 therefore be imitators of god as dear children be imitators of god as dear children we are meant to reflect god not to reflect anyone else we can enjoy fashion we can enjoy learning from others but actually the center of our lives needs to be jesus christ and god the father it's interesting to see in the ten commandments which are the summary of how to live our life successfully the first two deals with the fact that god says we should have no other gods before him or make any graven image or idol that we should bow down to to bow down to it means submitting to its values and then it says we shouldn't worship it which means give it praise admire it and say good things about it because if you have that as a foundation of your life everything else in your life goes wrong because it all starts out with what you worship because what you worship is what you resemble and many christians are worshiping all sorts of things and then trying to apply god's commandments to keep their lives on track but they've got to go back to the foundation because the foundation is wrong we don't change primarily by the word of god what i'm what i'm saying might sound controversial but it's not it's truth we don't change primarily by the word of god we change primarily by our encounter and relationship with god then you receive his instructions that is why the ten commandments starts with the first two don't worship any other god don't make any graven image and then it comes to practical day-to-day -day living john calvin made an outstanding statement he said this about us the human heart is an idol factory so there is this potential in us to put other things at the center of our lives and to become like those things and that is why we have so many problems in our lives if you want to know who you are and why you are today it's because of what you worship you take on the persona of what you worship it becomes inherent in your being and affects you so what is the definition of an idol an idol is anything that our hearts cling to and rely on for ultimate security anything that our hearts cling to and rely on for ultimate security what what we devote our affection our time and our attention to it could be your job it could be your spouse it could be your children it could be your obsession it's great you can give attention to those things but make sure that jesus is at the center first then when things happen to your job or your family or your finances or your house 
your world doesn't fall apart because it's rooted in Christ. Listen to what uh, Theodore Parker, the American uh, theologian, said. He said, man cannot live all to this world. If not religious, he will be superstitious. If he worships not the true God, he will have his idols. And so, we need God in our lives. And we mustn't replace him with anything else. <clears throat> because he is the one who changes us. In the book of Exodus, we read about the fact that God takes his people out of Egypt. He's good to them. He feeds them, provides for them, shades them, warms them. And now he promises that he's going to abide in the midst of them. He's going to build a tabernacle. And they are going to know him as the God who walks with them and spends time with them. But in Exodus chapter 32, Moses is up uh, on the mountain with God. And the people resort to idolatry. I want us to uh, read this today and see some of the important principles so that we can conduct our lives from this important section of scripture. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. As for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Notice they called Moses a fellow. It's interesting how fickle people are. One minute they follow, the next minute they don't. Let's not be like that. Let's follow God appointed leadership. Verse 2 and 3, or verses 2 and 3. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. You know, people often complain that the church is always asking for money. We need money to carry out the work of the kingdom. Verse 4. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Can you imagine? These are gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. This thing just came out of the fire. And they declare that it's been leading them all along. So the things they wore in their ears were actually their guidance. Ridiculous. Look at the knee-jerk reaction of Aaron. Verse 5 and 6. Then Aaron saw this. He built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in reverie. Verse 6. Early the next morning, they brought some animals to burn as sacrifices and others to eat as fellowship offerings. The people sat down to a feast, which turned into an orgy of drinking and uh, sex. When Aaron saw the people worshipping uh, another god, he tried to tag on to it, the worship of the true God. In other words, he tried to create what we are doing today. A, a, a smorgasbord, a mixture, collection, variety of, of religion to, to suit everybody, to try and, and turn it into something spiritual. And God was not happy with it. And we should not be tolerant of that kind of thing. Even though it's become very popular today, 
we need to serve the true God because it's not just about opinion and who is right and who is wrong. It's about what we are becoming. It's, it's what effect it's, it's, it's having on us. Let's, let's continue reading. Verse 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people whom you brought out of Egypt, your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become uh, corrupt. Verse 8. To 14 they have been quick to turn away from what i commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf they have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said these these are your gods israel who brought you up out of egypt i have seen these people the lord said to moses and they are stiff-necked people now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I'll make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should, you, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth turn from your fierce anger relent and do not bring disaster on your people remember your servant abraham isaac and israel to whom you swore by your own self i will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and i'll give you descendants all this land i promise them and it will be their inheritance forever then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Verse 15 to 20. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, There is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, It is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hand, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and, and burned it in the fire. Then he grounded it to powder, scattered it on water, and made the Israelites drink it. It's extremely different to the culture we have today. You believe what you believe. And it works for you. That's fine. And I believe what I believe. God says, let me take care of them. Moses says, no, leave that to me. I'll take care of them. Do you know why? Because of the effect that it has on people's lives. It's not just a concept or an opinion or a religious view. It changes who you become. You will see the result of the idolatry. Verse 21. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? They led him. So he led them. We cannot be, um, be a church where the people decide what the leader should do. Leaders lead and people follow. You don't vote what you want. You do what God wants. We have this idea that because everything is voted for in this culture, voting is the answer for everything. The majority doesn't determine what the will of God is. Neither in the nation, neither in spiritual matters. We do what, God's, we do what God says. He needs to be our authority. Verse 22 to 24. 
verse 22 to 24. Do not be angry, my Lord. Aaron answered, You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, Whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold and I threw it into the fire and out came the scarf. Wow, magic. Here is the result of idolatry. Verse 25. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so became a laughing stock to their enemies became a laughing stock to their enemies leaders should not let people get out of control leaders should lead people for their benefit you become a laughing stock when you worship idols you run wild you get out of control and you become weak in the face of your enemy verse 26 so he stood at the entrance of the camp and said whoever is for the lord come to me and all the Levites rallied to him. In here, we see Moses as a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Being with God reflects his glory. Moses' face uh, shone after his being in the presence of God. He is the embodiment of God's will. He comes down with the law of God. But he also comes down with mercy and grace. He comes down and he says, uh, to the Lord, don't destroy them. I will stand in the gap. He then comes down and deals with the people, brings the truth to them, but then offers grace by saying, if if you failed uh, this today, you messed up while I've been away, come to me. And Moses was there for 40 days. That is why they became impatient. They lost sight of God's will. And it's like that today. Jesus has gone to heaven and people are impatient. They are wondering, when is he coming back? And so they are uh, resorting to other beliefs, other religions. And the church is not the center of the value system of the world today. All sorts of beliefs have arisen and people have thrown God out and Jesus out. And they think they are clever than they should be. Let's learn some lessons from this passage because we can see that when we worship idols, our lives become a mess. We worship our way into sin and we worship our way out of sin. When you worship, when you worship created things, you worship your way into sin. When you start worshiping money, material things, sex, food, other people, you worship your way into sin. When you start worshipping your own opinion, you worship your way into sin. When you start to worship God, His values and His truths, and you make them the center of your life, and you declare them with your mouth, and you sing about them, you start worshipping your way out of sin. Most of us think that the way we get out of sin is by the word. The word is a way. And the Bible says, I've, hid, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You primarily need an encounter with God. When he is in the center, you worship your way out of sin. So let's look at the dangers of idolatry. Number one, idolatry is the result often of man's disappointment. If you are listening to me today and um, you haven't handed over ownership, of your life to him and you've made other things the center of your life i want you to know that god loves you cares about you he sent his son jesus to come and die on the cross of calvary for you so that you'll be saved you'll be changed and transformed he loves you he cares about about you he's got plans and he's got a purpose for your life so i want to introduce you to this friend of mine his name is jesus he wants to be your friend too I'm going to pray a simple prayer. It's your prayer. I'm going to give you the words you have the heart to it. Say this after me. Say, Father, today I recognize that I'm a sinner who needs a savior. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Have mercy on me. 
change me from the inside. Make me your own. I believe with all my heart that you died for me and you rose again. And with my mouth, I confess your lordship over my life. Make me a new creature in you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this simple prayer, once you know you are born again, you are saved. You are now a child of God. Welcome into God's kingdom. Heaven is rejoicing and celebrating because of you. I trust that today's message has been a blessing to you. And I want to say a big thank you to you for tuning into this broadcast. And I look forward to coming your way next time. And always remember, if you want a life that's going to be as abundant as possible, without chaos and confusion, don't live it any other way. Live it by God's word. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for watching the Ultimate Life Television program. We hope you have been blessed by the teaching. Tune in to our next program on the same channel and the same time next week. You are cordially invited to visit Treasure House ICGC for our Sunday morning church services at the New Horizon Center, South Lodge Avenue, adjacent to the Pollard's Hill Library, CR41LT. For ministry products and other information, please contact us on 0208-355-3461 or send an email to pastor at treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. You may also visit our website www.treasurehouseicgc.co.uk. Our service times are as follows, Sunday 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and Wednesday 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. You can also download our ministry app, Gracious Awaye, to listen to Pastor Gray's messages from the Apple Store or Google Play Store. May God richly bless you.